In today's episode of Sonny Evans on a Budget, we will find out if you can cross the GTA 5 map without using roads. First of all, what do I mean with roads? A quick Google search defines it as a wide way leading from one place to another, with a prepared surface making it ready to use for vehicles. Using this definition, I will avoid standard asphalt or concrete roads and dirt roads that are clearly used by cars. You know what you're thinking right now? You're just gonna go across the beach. This would be largely true, as this is the easiest route from Ascendus to Polito, which is clearly a lot of beach action. This is why I have to collect several checkpoints before I can make my way to Polito Bay. This is also why I've chosen to stop right here, instead of the traditional beach dot near the pier. From this location I have to make my way to the casino racetrack, then the Vinewood sign, then after this I have to visit the Sandy Shores airfield hangar, and then I have to cross this river before I can reach the final destination. Anyway, enough explaining. Let's get into the first attempt. Attempt 1. I was like a baby monkey exploring the jungle for the first time. My curiosity led me to look up these stairs, but promptly I realized it just led to a road. So instead I went straight, looking into the tunnel and realizing it was too dark and scary. But much like a real young monkey, seconds later I ended up falling. Attempt 2. After making my way up these stairs, I decided to muster up the courage to go and explore the dark and evil tunnel where I was promptly met with a 5,000 ton beast traveling in my direction. Hopped up an adrenaline and shocky mug, I decided it was a good idea to confront it, to no avail, and did however go away, which allowed me to continue my journey. All out of courage and shocky milk, I finally reached the end of the tunnel, where I decided it was best to leave the monster's territory. I now arrived at possibly the easiest part of the whole run, where I could skip road after road going 200 km an hour, but all good things end. In this case, it ended in a horrific crash, Luckily, this isn't Demon G, so I could continue to make my way to the casino racetrack. Once arrived, I completed the celebratory lap around the track. Fueled by my victory lap, I continued my way quickly, but maybe a bit too quickly. Attempt 3. Just kidding, 3. I once again made my way to the dark tunnel, where this time I avoided the monster and passed on quickly to a non-road highway. This time I didn't want to crash into a ceiling, so I slowed down. But I quickly learned why Jeremy Clarkson doesn't adhere to the speed limit. Hammond! Attempt 4. At this point I became less scared of the scary tunnel monster, and juked it like a London youth on a bicycle. This time I approached the end of the river, slow and steady, since this is known to win the game. I was immediately rewarded by a whole horde of women who were obviously into me because I had such a cool car. Me being on the job however meant I had to leave before they could throw themselves at me. I once again made it to my victory lap around the casino racetrack. This time however, I let the feeling of victory not rise to my head and took a more reasonable route out of the casino area. At this point however, I realized I had to cross a four lane highway. Luckily I quickly spotted the ledge, which showed some potential. Once on the ledge, I spotted this beautiful piece of hill that would hopefully catapult me over the road. So I prepared my run-up and floored it hard enough so I wouldn't pit a minivan going at highway speeds. After not committing a stage 5 felony, I could continue on my travels. The next part of my journey saw more grass than a League of Legends player could even comprehend. Luckily for them, the grass soon stopped to make way for an asphalt road. A road I decided to jump. Or not. This should have been a warning, but my brain promptly ignored it and ordered my hands to do this. Oh, Attempt 5. At this point I started to perfect the first part of the route, which meant I was at the grass fields once again. This time I decided to spend a little bit more time inspecting the jump I was about to take, which fortunately for me paid off. I now made my way up the mountain, crossing this dirt road with relative ease and sneaking under this road. I was now on top of the mountain, with only the dirt road separating me and the Vinewood sign. In hindsight, this jump was way too risky, but I just about to manage to miss the dirt road, which meant I could finally touch the Vinewood sign. I chose the W, because I was feeling like we would get this W. On the way down the mountain however, this cockiness was swiftly punished, as I shot out the sneaky tunnel right onto the road. Attempt 6. Finally starting at my first checkpoint meant I had to skip the sewer women, but it also meant I could touch grass faster. Filled with the confidence that I could respawn at the casino, I made quick measures with the first two roads, crossing them both in one big sweep. 
one road higher, my confidence shrunk to an appropriate level again, which meant I inspected and backed up a bit before attempting this jump. Good thing I did, because even I didn't believe I cleared it. But the tire marks don't lie. Not comfortable with the margins I was pushing, I decided to take a bigger jump for the next road. Now arriving at the Feinwood sign, I decided to choose the letter I for intelligent, because that would be my approach from now on. Intelligently, I pushed on clearing this road. I then encountered my sneaky tunnel again. This time, however, in the spirit of intelligence, I slowed down. Moments later, I rather unintelligently trapped myself in this area surrounded by roads. However, with some luck, I managed to escape, which put me right in front of another sneaky tunnel, which helped me cross the big road. Making my way west, I was able to use the hilly terrain to cross this road, but moments later, the hill set no. Attempt 7 Starting at the racetrack, I took an alternate route to my normal jump across the highway, but then I encountered this, a perfectly crafted piece of rock, just begging me to take it. Fast. So I did. Attempt 8 After beating the allegations from the rock, I continued the challenge and made my way to the Feinwood sign with my established route. Once again choosing the eye for intelligence. But this time I actually displayed signs of a 5 plus IQ. I decided to head back down the grass plane and search for an alternate route. And that is when I found this glorious little ledge which promptly launched me over the dirt road, blocking my path. From here I could cross the grasslands and arrive at the prison. But then Route 68 appeared. A two lane monstrosity of asphalt. But after some scouting, I found a promising jump. But the jump turned out to be a lot more nerve-wracking than I anticipated. Did I make it, or did I touch the godforsaken material called Tamekis Maximus? After close inspection, I barely avoided it. Which meant, the next checkpoint was now in sight. My heart rate started rising, my pupils started dilating, and my wheels started spinning as I built up speed to conquer the road blocking me from the airport hangar. Luckily, I made it. I promptly made my way to the hangar and celebrated with some fresh donuts. But like the British say, <laughs> so I made my way through the desert with skill and precision until I was faced with this. With seemingly no other option, I decided to send it on the side of the railroad in the hopes of crossing the road. But before I could even hit my target, a bush decided another direction was more suitable for me. Attempt 9. I made my way swiftly towards the green fields that lay below, but perhaps a bit too swiftly. Attempt 10 In this attempt I decided I didn't need to hold run up. A little spoiler, I didn't need to hold run up. Attempt 11 This time I chose for the letter E for the emotional damage my previous attempts had caused me. The new route towards the hangar however made this damage a lot less severe, as I quickly made my way back to Sandy Shores. From here, I headed back to the spot where my last attempt ended. Still convinced that my original plan was a good idea, I committed to the jump and avoided the bush, but to no avail. Attempt 12 Determined to make my way back to Sunny Shores quickly, I put the medal to the pedal. No, the pedal to... You know, iron to the accelerator, which as we all know isn't a good idea in the mountains. Combine this with me hitting the normal brake instead of the e-brake and we got a high speed reverse crash. Attempt 13. Opting for the D for desperation, I made my way back to the Senishus airfield hangar, this time however operating on the side of caution. After reaching the checkpoint, I quickly made my way back to the road that had stopped me this far. This time however opting for a scouting approach, which led me to this little spot. After short deliberation, I decided to go for it. Knowing that I would have to go all the way back to find what I failed, I decided to take a safe run-up distance to ensure my success. A success that was almost spoiled by the road directly after the landing zone. Luckily, the German engineering that made this car had thought of brakes, which helped me to continue this attempt. The next checkpoint was awfully close, but there was a road blocking me from accessing it. But, as we have seen earlier, a little scouting will always work. Although the road is extremely wide here, I decided to go for it, as I had a long run up and the ramp seemed high enough. What I did not expect however, is clearing the road and the river in one go. I was now searching for a way over the next road, but the steep river rock seemed like an unlikely ally. 
But, like my high jump coach always said, if you can't go over, go under. After having made my way under the road, I headed up to the next road, realizing there were no small easy jumps to cross it. So I decided to head up higher and go for it. While this did work for the first road, it however did not work for the second road, which I was now falling towards at about 300 knots. Attempt 14. After making my way through the desert and over the river again, this time carrying even more speed, I decided to go all the way up the mountain in the hope of spotting a better ramp for the next two roads. Once on the mountain, I spotted this area where the two roads have a much wider gap in between them. This way I could cross the first road and then calmly decide how I would cross the second one. I then proceeded to barely miss the first road, but nonetheless I had made it. After almost falling into the road while looking for a suitable ramp, I had found a spot. Sketchy? Yes, but a spot nonetheless. With a run-up of approximately 11.5 bald eagles, I attempted and surprisingly made this jump, but this put me to my next challenge, not destroying the car in the water. Like a proper marine biologist, I decided to get out and quite literally test the waters. After having done some research, I found the perfect spot, which made crossing a breeze. I then headed up to the forest, where I hovered 20 centimeters over this road before jumping this next road, which allowed me to climb higher and search for a way over the highway. This spot seemed promising, but the landing would most likely let me call to most mutual and somewhat close. The next spot, however, seemed much more safe, with a nice wide open section of beach. Without hesitation, I jumped the road, putting me on the beach which would lead me straight to victory. Between me and the finish was only sand and grass. And, of course, a multi-million dollar bunker I not used yet, which meant that I watched a 4 minute cutscene of Agent 14 explaining to me once I was done listening to Agent 14, I could finally continue on my final sprint to glory. And what a sprint it was, avoiding trees, water, rocks and peers. Okay, maybe not peers, but anyway, after spending way too long trying this in a 35 degree room, I finally crossed the map without using the road. And I asked myself, why did I do this? But then I remembered. I didn't want to pay road tax.